One of the things I find myself using loads in Final Cut Pro X is an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is not something which you get in Final Cut out of the box. So today I want to tell you what is an adjustment layer, how can you use it and how can you get your hands on one for free for Final Cut Pro X. So let's get into it. Hey friends, Will here, got a quick tutorial for you today. Yeah, adjustment layers. So most editing software provides adjustment layers out of the box. They're a standard feature in Premiere, in DaVinci Resolve, but in Final Cut Pro, they don't provide them for you. Now, luckily, it's pretty easy to make your own adjustment layer if you own Apple Motion, but don't worry about that because actually I've already made some adjustment layers and they're available in the description down below for free download. So once you've watched the video, head on down there, grab an adjustment layer and hopefully you can start using them. But first things first, what is an adjustment layer? An adjustment layer is an element which you can place on your timeline, much like a title element, for example, and you can add adjustments to that layer, hence its name, and those adjustments will affect any of the layers below that layer. These are really helpful when you want to apply an effect to like an entire section of your timeline, which includes multiple different clips, without having to add that to every single clip and copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. So um, really great for that use case. Um, and really, because you can have any effect to them, there's really no limit to how you might use them. Now, I'm gonna share with you today a couple of scenarios uh, that I use them for, but yeah, you can really get quite imaginative with them and there's, there's lots that can be done with them. Let's dive into my screen and let's get going with this. So uh, I'm here, I'm in Final Cut. I've just got last week's YouTube video actually as a kind of project to, to sort of talk through and show how I'm using adjustment layers on a really regular basis. Now, if you do grab the adjustment layers that I've put in the description for you, the first thing you're wanna, gonna want to do is get them into your copy of Final Cut so that they're available to use. You can see here in my, um, viewer, I've got under my titles, uh, I've got this adjustment folder and in there I've got four different types of adjustment layer. Um, so download the file and then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to your finder, go to your user folder, go to movies and then you should have a motion templates folder. If you don't have a motion templates folder it's because you don't own motion or you haven't uh, used any motion templates previously. So if you haven't got a motion templates folder, just create one, capital M, capital T, motion templates, and uh, Final Cut will be able to pick up on that. Then once you've got that folder, inside that folder, you may, if you've already got it, have these options, compositions, effects, generators, titles, and transitions. So we're just gonna go into the titles folder and then this here, this folder adjustment, is the folder that I'm giving you for free for download. So you just grab the folder that from the download, unzip it if it needs unzipping, and you put it in the titles folder there. If you've already got Final Cut open at this time, you will need to quit Final Cut and then reopen it. And you should, then when you come into this, uh, into Final Cut, click on the text and generators uh, tab at the top here and you can see you'll have all your titles, generators, etc. You will have this adjustment category on the left and in there you will have four different adjustment layers. So these four adjustment layers are adjustment layers that I've made. Um, they are all exactly the same. You don't really need four. One would do exactly the same thing. However, I have found that I tend to use adjustment layers for a few certain tasks and by creating four adjustment layers and naming them by how I use them, it means that when I drag them onto my timeline, if I say this one's called grade layer, so this is how I would apply a color grade to a set of clips, if I drag this onto my timeline, you can see that it is called grade layer and it's just 
tidy. This is something quite new. I've only just started doing this. For you, obviously, you may wish to duplicate the adjustment layers that I've provided you, rename them to how you use them. But just very quickly, I've got one that is called adjustment layer. That is just a generic adjustment layer. So if I was using an adjustment layer for something new, then I would use that one. I've got correction layer. So if I'm doing color correction, then I would use that layer and it would when I put it on the timeline, it will say it's a correction layer. I've got grade layer, which is exactly as you would imagine, where I would add a color grade, perhaps a custom LUT, for example. And then I've got crop layer, which is something I use, which I've recently started using adjustment layers for, which is a really quick way of doing little cropping's on like interview footage. So like this, for example, and then back out again, that's, I've just dropped an adjustment layer on there and that's how I've achieved that. So uh, let me show you uh, quickly how I'm sort of using um, adjustment layers in this project very briefly. Um, uh, this was my tripod video from a few weeks ago and I did this little intro of me just getting some b-roll of this particular tripod, okay. And I wanted all of these to have a style, a LUT applied to them. So what I've done is I've grabbed my adjustment layer, which is this purple layer here, placed it over the top of all of the clips that I want to be affected. And then I can simply add the LUT. Uh, on this occasion, um, I've used one of Peter McKinnon's LUTs, the Kodak Killer LUT, just and I've got it bumped up quite high on this particular occasion. So uh, to, to do that, I would simply grab an adjustment layer, say I'll use my grade one in this instance, drop it onto my timeline. Let me just get rid of this adjustment layer first. So I would drag it out to where I want it to be. That's my grade layer. Then I would open my effects window and I would go to color and I've got my custom LUT there. So I drag my custom LUT onto the adjustment layer and then from up here I can choose to add uh, Kodak Killer and I can then dial in the amount just like I would on any other, okay? So that is one use for it. The reason I have the correction layer, okay, is quite nice if you're if you need to do some kind of corrections to your footage before you apply the grade, then what you can do is you can add a correction layer. Uh, let me just scroll along to somewhere that's not got anything going on. So say I've got this bit of footage here, this little clip of the overhead camera. I could add my correction layer first make that the length of that clip. I could then, whilst that layer is selected, come into my color and make any exposure, white balance adjustments that I want to make to that clip. Okay, I won't make any corrections right now because I, I don't need to. And then I would put another adjustment layer over the top as my grade. Now it's worth noting, you don't have to use adjustment layers. Obviously you could add that correction and the custom light directly to the clip. Um, for me, I quite like using the adjustment layers because it's quite visual. Um, it also means that instead of having to copy and paste with attributes um, like you can do to take color grades from one clip to another, um, it's just very visual and you can just grab that grade um, and you can hold Alt on your keyboard and move it to somewhere else. Um, so that's one use case for those. So then another thing that I've started to do recently, um, you might notice if you watch my YouTube uh, videos regularly, you'll notice that sometimes if I'm talking about something, I like to crop in and uh, use you know, the same piece of footage, but essentially to create a sort of fake second camera angle. Um, and the, I used to do this very manually, go to each clip, and if it was a long clip, I would cut the clip um, either side where I want the uh, zoom to appear. So if I come along here, let's just, let's just do, so say if this clip here, if I wanted to put a zoom into this clip, I would say, right, I want the zoom to appear uh, here, for example, so I would command B cut and then I would say and I want it to end there So I would do command B cut and then in this particular clip 
um, I would then do uh, shift T for transform. Um, and then if I zoomed out and then I would grab the corner of it, oops, sorry, where am I? There, grab the corner of it, put my zoom in place like so, and then say done. And then that hopefully, zoom. Okay, obviously that's not a particularly great use of the zoom. I just randomly chose a section of the timeline to do it to. That though, I found that quite time consuming, putting the cuts in, and then if you decide that actually you didn't want the cut quite where it is, then it's, it's quite hard to tweak it. So by using an adjustment layer for that, it's really easy. And you can see uh, here is an example of where I've done that. So I've put my crop layer, adjustment layer onto the timeline where I want the zoom to be. I've applied the scale to the adjustment layer. So I've zoomed in by 150% and slightly changed uh, the position. And that does exactly the same thing. And if I said, oh, oh, that zoom in starts a bit too early, then I can just move the adjustment layer and very quick and easy. What it also means is I use these crops quite regularly throughout my talking videos. Um, I, I find it's a great way to sort of emphasize a point that I'm making or just add a little bit of visual interest. So once I've got that one and I've, I'm happy with the crop that I've created in this instance, as I say, I've cropped in, zoomed in by 150%, I can then actually just do alt drag and move that zoom to wherever else on the timeline I want it and know it's gonna give me exactly the same effect. So yeah, that's a real time saver for me. Get one the way I like it and then obviously duplicate it wherever I want to punch in and emphasize or use that second angle. Obviously, you can then tweak them. You don't have to always use the same uh, scale amount to achieve that little crop in effect. You can. Uh, change each adjustment layer differently, but generally just for those quick zoom ins, I find that a really effective way to do it. So that is adjustment layers, free adjustment layer download in the description down below. Hopefully this video has given you some ideas of how you can use them to get creative with your editing techniques or just as a time saver. As I say, the main ways I use them is generally for color correction or for applying a grade to my footage or I've started using them recently for these crops. Another way actually sometimes if I wanna add a vignette to an entire video, then an adjustment layer is a really easy way to do that. Just drag it on top, extend it to the full length of the project, add that vignette, dial in the settings, and you know that it's gonna be consistent throughout the whole video rather than adding the vignette to every single clip and then having to dial them each in. So yes, that is another way to use it. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you like this sort of thing, me chatting about video editing, photography, filmmaking, gear reviews, and my general journey as I learn filmmaking and photography, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified when I next upload a video. Other than that, that's everything for this week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.